Okay, it's day 11 of this ginger germination experiment. And you can see a lot more green in these buds. So I'm going to do a transplant of these into soil. So I just bought a pot like this. It has a 10 inch diameter, which is 25.4 centimeters. So I don't know how long these kinds of pots have been around for, but they're cheap. They're made of plastic. They sort of are colored to look like ceramic. This one is a self-watering auto riego. Well, I guess auto riego means self-watering. Um, so basically this claims that you can pour water in this hole here. And what that will do is uh, flood this uh, chamber that has sort of a cross indent in the middle and it has these slits. So I'm assuming when I pour a lot of dirt in there, dirt's not gonna go in, but the water vapor will go in when the sun hits this pot, it'll cause evaporation and the water in that chamber will uh, evaporate and go upwards and humidify the soil which will provide the roots with all the water they need without drowning them. So the instructions also say to water only in the first week of planting. So I'm going to fill this with potting mix and compact it somewhat because I don't like it to be too loose and then I'm going to water from the top after I make my transplant. Okay, so I filled this pot with soil, but it's not enough, and I'll have to go out and get some more. Okay, it's day 12, so as you can see, I put these ginger rhizome cuttings into soil. So for the time being, I decided I should just keep spraying with distilled water from a spray bottle all over these uh, ginger rhizomes. So I know these are actually called rhizomes, they're not roots. There are roots that actually come out of the rhizomes, and resemble the roots of all the other plants we know. But these structures are actually called rhizomes. It's just that everyone calls them roots and that's why in my title and early on in this documentary I kept going ginger root, ginger root, you know, because that's what everyone says. So I didn't want to cause confusion, but the proper spelling is uh, R-H-I-Z-O-M-E, rhizome. So that's part of uh, the root system essentially. So photosynthesis has already begun in these shoot systems, but we really haven't seen the level of differentiation we need to recognize, you know, distinct leaves and whatnot. And this bud is still developing. Um, this one is coming along nicely. In this cross-sectional slice, the bud is also greening the shoot system. And if everything looks soggy, that's because I just sprayed everything with water. So it'll look dry again within a few hours. But I just wanted water to trickle down along the sides of these things gently into the soil to provide all around moisture for these uh, potential ginger plants. So nothing has gone on with this middle section yet. And nothing here as well. This piece is developing nicely. It's got green buds. And this one is coming along a little bit more slowly. It's a very small piece of the rhizome. Okay, it's day 67 of my honeydew germination experiment and day 13 of my ginger germination experiment. So as you can see, I've made a reflector. It's just some used cardboard that came from a, a hall mirror box, full body mirror. So all I did was tape two sheets of aluminum foil parallel uh, but functionally this reflector is 97 percent or more complete because you know that chunk missing at the bottom that's not gonna really help out anyway and the strip in the middle that's uh, negligible Start to peel it away look how much darker that becomes so the most obvious spot is right over there on the carpet but that's just because that's a reflective surface with uh, synthetic fibers and there's also the pots too they become much brighter but you know the rest of the light is just getting absorbed by these plants in the soil so that makes a huge difference and I ran out of aluminum foil that's why this isn't complete but I'm going to go out and buy some more. Uh, these are all very cheap materials, very realistic for anyone who wants to copy me and do the same. And I have another half of the box and another slab that I don't know what to do with. 
but I was thinking I'll just make two reflectors like this and have them at different angles and provide you know the hot humid environment these plants probably like a lot more than the current mid-march you know early spring San Diego weather especially indoors there's not all that much sunlight the window of sunlight is very short during the day you know it's only about maybe a hundred minutes at this point if even if I had two reflectors set up at different angles slightly tilted down like this I think I could capture more angles of light throughout the day and lengthen the amount of time and not just the intensity of which these plants receive sunlight. Another purpose of these reflectors is to help heat up these pots and soil and hopefully when I start watering at the holes in the bottom a week later that'll help evaporation and increase the efficiency of this plant spa design. I've invested in some hardware. I bought these pots and I bought this lamp to replace the LED lamp that broke. It's still day 13 and I don't know if these rhizome cuttings should have any shock response to being suddenly transplanted in soil instead of water but I imagine that they like it a lot more in soil uh, figuratively because this is a lot more akin to natural conditions rather than being waterlogged in a dish with some kind of uh, gross looking ginger soup swirling around at the bottom but I disinfected everything with Lysol as you can remember so bacterial and mold growth probably weren't issues. So I transplanted this most robust rhizome cutting into the center of the pot and it seems to be the most promising. It has uh, two buds developing here, apical meristems that will create the shoot system and I expect leaves to erupt from these soon. And likewise this one is coming along nicely and there's also a spot at the top that could develop as well. The development is slower in these smaller rhizome cuttings but it's there nonetheless and I expect two shoot systems to come out of this. You don't really see that much greening occurring in this rhizome cutting. It's very small and but nonetheless you see these two buds developing more and more day after day. So the smaller the rhizome cutting is the less resources it'll have stored in those uh, rhizome pieces to start new plants. This rhizome cutting was the largest swath. This rhizome cutting was from the very bottom of the original ginger rhizome or root as people call them on the very beginning of this experiment and it had only one bud so it's been able to devote all these resources to this one bud and I think that's why it's developing a little faster than the one I just showed you over here. I'm still seeing no signs of activity in this section or in this rhizome cutting. So that doesn't necessarily mean that nothing will happen. It's just that hopefully under these new optimal conditions that I'm using uh, my sun reflectors on to warm up this pot during the day, I'll get the right conditions to stimulate faster growth of everything and hopefully get these two rhizome cuttings to germinate. So I'm going to do a demo. This is with no reflectors. one reflector and two reflectors since the sun comes from an angle in the afternoon and hits this board that mostly makes this one the most effective one but uh, this one has an effect as well and as I demonstrated earlier in the morning these two solar reflector panels actually have the most pronounced effect during dawn and dusk when the light is very dim so right now there's a lot of direct sunlight these two solar reflector panels work in conjunction with each other so this panel here reflects the light coming in at sort of a you know oblique angle and it'll hit this and I'm counting on it to hit this reflector and this one does most of the work by reflecting it directly onto these two potted plants and the pots and the ground around it so that heats up everything and also provides a lot of light so that's why when I remove this board it actually diminishes the effect of the reflection the most so let's see if I do a demo like this 
closely the taking away of this other board that would reduce most of the reflection. Okay, it's day 14. And as you can see, I've deployed two full solar reflector panels that I created out of cardboard and aluminum foil, very makeshift materials, and very cheap and affordable for anyone who chooses to mimic this tactic anywhere in the world. So there are multiple configurations and ways and angles in which I could place these solar reflectors. And in this one, the second one makes the bigger difference when I move it away. So it's day 14 for this ginger germination experiment and as you can see there is a little bit more greening of these buds or apical meristems. There is some progress but it's slow. Ginger is definitely not a fast growing plant and this rhizome cutting looks the same as it did yesterday. So I'm watering copiously by pouring water onto these rhizome cuttings and I'm hoping that this will provide combined with the solar reflectors the warm moist environment that's more akin to the tropical environment that ginger thrives in. Finally I wanted to give a demonstration on what the difference the LED light makes. So this is the new LED light that I bought yesterday. It's a 60 watt equivalent of an incandescent bulb but it's uh, actually an LED light and it provides 850 lumens. So I'm gonna push this foot pedal switch and turn this on and you can be the judge as to whether it makes a difference or not. Okay. So in my opinion, based on what you see on the camera and what I'm seeing with my own eyes, I think that 850 lumens of light makes almost no difference. So I don't know how many lumens these plants are getting right now, but it could be on the order of uh, 100 orders of magnitude greater. You know, if this is making no difference, 850 lumens, then these plants are definitely being illuminated by, you know, maybe tens of thousands of lumens right now. Okay, it's day 15 of this ginger germination experiment. So like with the honeydew experiment, I did a lot more watering on day 3, and that shouldn't matter because I don't think any of these have really developed roots yet. So this central slice of the rhizome is uh, it's pretty well developed compared to all the other ones. You know, there's photosynthesis going on here. It looks like another bud is coming out on the side of that. So there's basically four buds. Um, but in terms of development, I think this one might be the most advanced. It looks like it's ready to start sprouting some leaves. And I'm really interested to observe the leaf development of ginger. Likewise, this one is well on its way with two buds, one of which is really big. But it also looks like there could be another development, um, you know, here. You know, so that looks like another bump. Predictably, this one is growing still, and it's using this cross-section of the rhizome on the very bottom for energy. So this one just had fortuitously had a bud there when I cut it and the other two didn't so there's basically nothing really visually going on here and here but these were taken from the middle of uh, you know the rhizome cutting so I don't know you know how long it's going to take but I'll just keep watering and waiting and hopefully good things will happen. And finally we have this piece. It hasn't started photosynthesizing yet, but it seems to be doing just fine. And this bud is coming out to be quite large. So I expect a healthy plant with uh, two shoot systems to be established very soon. So earlier I touched on the fact that these are actually rhizomes, you know, rhizome cuttings. I cut a rhizome into six pieces and not a root as most people would say. So a rhizome is, in botany, a structure that comes from the axillary buds underground. It's a modified stem that can actually grow um, sort of perpendicular to the force of gravity. So it's not influenced by gravitropism, uh, well, not biased uh, to go up or down. And they basically go out in a lateral direction, parallel to the surface of the soil, and they often help in vegetative reproduction of a plant. So you'll have a developed plant, it has tons of energy stored in these rhizomes like this. And then if it gets big enough and it goes out far enough underground to
to the side and shoot systems can come up and produce new plants um, not too far away from the parent plant so that's one way for a single plant to colonize and take over a lot of land rhizomes are also called root stalks or creeping root stalks and a fun example of this is uh, the quaking aspen which is a species of aspen tree in Colorado and in other states you know it basically has rhizomes that reproduce uh, through vegetative reproduction so um, there's a quaking aspen colony called the pondo colony and it's basically over a million years old by some estimates because some tree originally started cloning itself underground like this and it produced just uh, so many uh, quaking aspen trees that it covers a vast area and I think for certain plants um, you know the ones that reproduce by adventitious roots and whatnot like some of those sever the original connection after the new plants the clones are well established so therefore you can't even kill all of them with disease because they're no longer connected at that point so I'm not sure if ginger does that